I've been dealing with tendonitis for the past couple of months and it's been an absolute pain because everything that I enjoy doing involves moving my arms and using my arms with power. <laughs> I wanted to maintain as much strength as possible and this week um, I just kind of documented the workouts that I did and the ways that I kind of worked around not being able to use my bicep and shoulder muscles on my left arm. So we're going to do a leg workout today. Alright, what are you doing? <laughs> It's also worth mentioning that these exercises are all very time efficient because obviously they require very little setup. It's a great way to get a lot of exercises in when you don't have a lot of time. Here I am going to the hip thrust machine. This has been my best friend because carrying weights over to a bar is just something that <laughs> I cannot do at the moment. So this has just been an absolute saviour. For some reason, I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but with the hip thrust machine, I can lift considerably less than a barbell. I don't know if it's a placement or what, like, I do lock out as well with my barbell. I suppose the bench that I tend to use is quite low, I don't know if that's got something to do with it, but that, I would think that would stop me lifting as much weight. So, if anyone's got any ideas, that's interesting. I ended up doing two sets of 13 reps and then two sets of 10 reps with these. And now moving on to glute extensions. I had a phase where I really loved these because obviously you can just get on the thing and start straight away without any setup. Just carry a plate over if you want extra weight. Lately I've not enjoyed them as much and I really started to like RDLs because I got my form right and started being able to do them properly and feeling them intensely in my glutes. And obviously I can't do that at the moment with not being able to carry bars. So I'm back to the glute extensions. I don't love them, but they're convenient. Next we've got pistol squats, which I love. I feel them very intensely in my glutes, even though they're a squat type thing where the back rounds. But yeah, they're a really quick one that you can bam out as well. <laughs> And we've got to go to failure on these because it's a long, slow progression with pistol squats. Even pistol squats bothered my arm because I was tensing them to try and keep balance. I had a little bit extra time so I went over to the bag and did some just moving around footwork kicks, mostly kicks, and just fainting with the left arm. And ooh, I just could not resist putting on the gloves and doing a little bit of work with my right hand. Um, I did faint a little bit with the left and it was a little bit sore so I mostly worked on my right hand and just moved around and kind of got back into things a little bit more because I have not moved around even in my stance much lately. It took everything in me to refrain from throwing left hooks. That's my favourite punch and it just comes out so naturally and I just had to stop myself because that would not be good for my shoulder or my elbow. Doing a little bit of self pole work and trying to get good at my right hooks. When learning something on my bad side I would normally do my good side and then my bad side and kind of interchange because that helps you learn on your bad side but obviously I can't practice on my good side even so I'm really winging it here but getting a little bit of progress. Day two, I am being very lazy today. <laughs> Still moving around, I really prefer having done something like this than not do anything at all. I'm very limited even what I can do with core exercises at the moment, obviously I can't do planks. So I'm, I'm kind of doing <laughs> the bog standard boring core exercises. But it, it feels good, it feels good to move and use those muscles still. And since I'm at home and I, well, I'm shameless anyway at the gym, I have a nice big stretch in between and get comfy and lie down for a bit. People have different opinions on static stretching, but I just really love the way I feel afterwards. Just looser and more nimble and it 
calms me down. It's like a form of meditation for me. And just focusing on the breathing throughout is just so relaxing and puts me in the best mood. Roxy's favourite yoga position is the downwards dog, of course, and she is just so good at it, she thought she'd show you herself. Day three, Wednesday, I'm on the hip thrust machine again. I told you this is my best friend lately. I did sleep in this day, so I had a very limited time for my workout, so I did two sets, but I did them both with 14 reps. Which is implementing that progressive overload compared to the Monday session. So I was happy enough with that. As my second and final exercise of the Wednesday, I move on to split squats. The bench here is a lot lower than what I'd usually use, but I couldn't get hold of one today just to get that depth. But anyway, I'm leaning forwards by hinging at the hip so that it's a glute bias split squat. I'm also using dumbbells, which put my muscles under more stress so that they can grow. And I'm sitting back into my glute to get that stretch. The bench is a lot lower than I would normally prefer just to get that depth and really stretch the glute. I am however making the most of it and leaning forward by hinging at the hip to make that glute bias and sitting back into the glutes so that you get that full stretch. I'm also using dumbbells to put my muscles under extra stress so that they grow. I did 10 on each side for two sets of these. And that concludes my really short Thursday workout, but I'm so glad that I turned up and if I skipped the gym every time I didn't have much time for a workout, then I just wouldn't look the way I look. That consistency is key and you only need 12 sets to failure a week to have optimum muscle growth. Thursday we are just mucking about a bit, having some fun because we've got the chance to. Um, with having a more lenient routine, like I can choose to do these things. At least I'm up and about and I'm doing something and it's actually very beneficial because I'm practicing a skill that I want to practice. So I've got my nunchucks out, these are foam ones so they're very lightweight and not going to hurt me while I'm training with them. I do have wooden ones as well. Um, but they're a lot harder to do things with so I kind of try to do the skills first on the, the foam ones and then kind of bring that over to the wooden ones eventually. And here I am back to the boring car exercises with some weighted sit-ups. Um, I mean they're kind of a thing. And then I'm doing the side to side dumbbell things but I'm having to shift the weight with my right arm so it is a little bit wonky. I was really pushing towards more functional core exercises before my injury, um, kind of leaning towards the calisthenic side of things and developing my stability, uh, which is why I think I got too bored during this workout. I did end up ditching the core exercises to really focus on the nunchucks because I was making so much progress so quickly and I was very excited about it. So this, this is just a lot of nunchucks. So I am doing wrist rolls to figure eights both ways and trying to do a continuous um, routine of those. It's, it didn't actually take me that long to be able to do this. Wrist rolls continuously towards the back of the hand, so without changing direction, is a lot harder um, because you just lose your hand positioning a lot easier. So this one actually I find looks more elaborate and showy but it's a lot, lot easier, which I think is a win-win. Now, I must have caught the nunchuck bug that day because after work I went home and got the wooden ones out and did some practice with those. The thing is with these ones, they're a lot heavier, so if you do mess up, it hurts. <laughs> So you gotta watch out for your head and you gotta watch out for your hands. Um, so I added a little bit of that. I'm not gonna massively encourage it because it kind of does hurt, but it was fun and I got a bit of progression with it, but I still have to be so careful. Friday we're on legs again.
starting with some quick knee extensions, um, which was just so awkward to film, it was so busy in there. And here you get a beautiful composition of not even the exercise I am partaking in, so <laughs> apologies for that. Um, it was so packed and I've come so far I can't give up filming on the Friday. On the leg press I did two sets of 66 kilograms for 10 reps. <laughs> Now, I said earlier in the week that I haven't been able to carry any barbells. Well, on the Friday, I did decide to do RDLs with a trap bar, which is 37.5 kilograms. And I should have listened to my past self because this was um, very delightful in the glutes, but very regrettable in the elbow. But the whole healing process has been kind of trial and error. I'm trying to keep up the mobility and strength in my elbow and shoulder while avoiding irritating and aggravating it. Let me know if you've dealt with an injury like this or are dealing with one and what you've kind of done to work around it. If you've got any tips for other people or myself, um, we can have a little discussion about how we get on with our lives with everything being twice as difficult. And thank you for watching this video. If you've made it here, I am congratulating you for having so much patience. Thank you and good night.